Hello and welcome to this week's Live Local and Loud with me, Kevin Gorn, and it's a Glaston Budget special. On this week's show, I shall be chatting to you young singer-songwriter Heather McDowell, who will also be performing at Glaston Budget. And we'll be playing some local homegrown tunes by local bands. Hello, I hope you're all well and having a great week. So yes, we've got another Glaston Budget special lined up for you. Um, in case you're wondering what Glaston Budget is, is it's a three-day tribute band festival uh, near Leicester, just north of Leicester in sunny Wimeswold. It's happening over the from Thursday the 2nd of June to Saturday the 4th. Um, so yeah, great little thing. I go there every year. Uh, there's tribute bands to David Bowie, Blur, The Beatles, Amy Winehouse tribute, ABBA tribute, Dark Side, all sorts of wonderful tribute bands uh, that perform uh, just like the they sound like the real thing. Um, but obviously the crowd's much more intimate and it's much better fun in my my humble opinion. Um, but also with all the tribute bands there's also a lot of original bands because there's about six different stages uh, in the festival and lots of those have the original bands uh, like the ones that we have on this show so local bands that are trying to make a name for themselves and they play their own music so let's get cracking with one of those original bands it's the heartlands roots band you'll be able to see them at glaston budget on the saturday the 4th of june at 8.40 in the evening in the Loco stage. Here's the Heartland Root ba- Roots Band, Hit Me Like a Freight Train.
was the wonderful Heartlands Roots band Hit Me Like a Freight Train. They're playing Saturday 8.40 on the Loco stage, Glastonbury, Saturday the 4th of June. Now it's time for Arcades, who are not playing Glastonbury this year, um, and but they're just one of my old favourites, so it's Arcades in the Water. Arcades in the Water. Of course, they're no longer with us. They've split up. However, the lead singer Tommy Cobley um, is uh, performing solo around the country. You can catch up with him. His Facebook page is Tommy Cobley One. Great stuff. Okay, so now here's somebody who will be playing at Glaston Budget. Um, it's Jonesy, local rapper Jonesy. He'll be at the um, on the Icon stage on Friday the 3rd of June at Glastonbury at 4 o'clock. The Icon stage is the outdoor one. You pass it on the way uh, from the indoor stages to the outdoor stages, I suppose. So, yeah, great stuff. Looking forward to seeing him on Friday the 4th of... Friday the 3rd of June on the Icon stage. Meanwhile, let's see what he sounds like and here's Jonesy Not Alone. There's gonna be a brighter day uh. You know you can talk to me Just tell me what you're going through There's so many people in this world That feel just like you Next time Challenge 
can trap you in your path Oh, you find it hard to battle through You find it hard to take a step back Yeah You feel like the whole world is pushing you around and around You find it hard to keep your feet down on solid ground Uh, yeah you walk alone in this world, you feel like no one is there You isolate to your own space, you feel like no one cares You have me surround you, it's hard to open up Your head is all over the place, there's parts that you wanna give up uh. Jonesy Not Alone and you can see him on Friday the 3rd of June on the Icon stage at 4 o'clock in the afternoon so that'll be fantastic. Okay so now it's time for a bit of Comprehend. He's not playing Glaston Budget but this is his first release of 2022 and it also features his good old buddy Parco. So here's Comprehend featuring Parco Loco. Don't mean hi when I say that I'm not the guy to look up to nah. I've done things in my life that if I could change back time then I would do I would. But I guess we're all masking advice yeah. I'm not the one you should ask for advice I was single again but I guess that is life I've married the game, now rap is my wife yeah. Don't sketch but I draw attention My words are a threat way more than weapons yeah. You could bring all four your brethren Cause my pen writes with the force of Tekken I know I don't know everything about politics Sometimes I think it's a house with a lot of Opposite views who are spewing a crock of sh All in pursuit of them making their pockets yeah. thick They get people to fight in a war Who got no idea what they're fighting it for no, they, don't. they tell you to die for their cause They want more cash cause they're buying a Porsche Don't mind me, I'm just blazing a big so I see like you say that your wrist is I don't wanna risk it That's what you say to escape all the mischief yeah. I don't really care if you hate me No, no, you can give me air till you pay me Go, go Everybody stares like we're crazy Loco Maybe we're loco till we sell out our own show don't mind me, I'm just being myself Swigging my can while I'm reading the metro Sat on the bus cause I run out of petrol Wondering why I do it to myself I need taught a lesson Change is key like I'm a core progression But that's just me, I don't yeah. take well to tell him I got a streak in me, guaranteed I melt yeah. your melon I never, never, never says to tell him that I reckon I'm the one to set examples I mean I ain't never been straight laced I'm a Norman Bates with a pouch full of samples Sipping on Admiral Spice and Daniels Mixing drink till my tongue feel tangled It's mangled, looking like roadkill Man, I still step on stage and kill samples Man, I still spray like a G36 seat Every bar drop, that's history Kids be looking at me when I flow, bro You don't wanna be like me, that's too risky nah, Me, nah. I can't chant no shit, though Never. Here to see these wacky gets frisbee Dashed in a bush full of fresh dog feces This opinion don't come with no visies I don't really care if you hate me No, no, you can give me air till you pay me Go, go Everybody stares like we're crazy Loco, maybe we're loco Till we sell out our own 
show I keep my business under wraps Like a boxer's fist on a punching bag Best believe that I come with facts I got food for thought and I'm munching that You can frown but we'll pave the way Till we're holding it down like a paperweight And I ain't been paid for days Cause I lost my job so I crave a wage I've done bold stuff just for a paycheck I've even sold drugs and had to make beds But it's just old cuz money and slaves heads If we revolt then we won't have to pay debts When we say less, we do not try My socks don't match, I'm an odd guy I would skip class while I got high Now I pay tax and I shot vibe Was a lost mind, now I invest in this My words make your head spin like the exorcist One day I'll be the best to spit You can mark my words like you Testing this, yeah. smoking d- got me feeling blue while I'm seeing red and I'm bleeding truth. Uh, uh, Sometimes all you need to do is to be your best and to just be you. I don't really care if you hate me, no, no. You can give me air till you pay me, go, go. Everybody stares like we're crazy, loco. Maybe we're loco till we sell out our own show. That was Comprehend and Loco, featuring his good buddy, Parco, who won't be playing Glaston Budget. But somebody who very much will be all over Glaston Budget is this week's interviewee, young Heather McDowell, singer-songwriter. She'll be playing three times at Glaston Budget. She'll be telling you when in a moment, so that's this week's interview. But let's start off with one of her songs, Small Village, Big Town. Oh, 
that was Small Village, Big Town by the amazing singer songwriter Heather McDowell, who happens to be this week's guest here on Live Local and Loud. Hello there, Heather. How the devil are you today? Hi, I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being there. And thank you very much for coming on my little show today. It's a pleasure to have you on. Now, tell me, can you t- just give us an idea as to how long you've been performing and how did you get into it? Um, well, I've been performing since I was around 10 years old and I've just been doing like little singing concerts here and there. Wow. And um, I've been songwriting since I was seven years old, but I didn't have the confidence until later years to um, songwrite for myself because I used to be a ghostwriter for like little independent bands and stuff there was um songs that i would find that artists just didn't connect to and i would be like i can see the potential in this song and in the end i decided it would be better if i maybe sang and um showed this music to people because i didn't really consider myself a singer i considered myself more um an actress because i love theater and stuff but as soon as i started i just didn't want to stop so it's gone really well brilliant so to you then what what does a songwriting mean to you is it a means of self-expression storytelling or or something to get a message across or a mixture i think it's a mixture because um i wasn't very good at communicating my feelings when i was a child i was very like um shy and awkward Mm. and I remember when I started writing songs it came like a second language to me it was like a way that if I if I was trying to say something to someone I'd be so frustrated that I couldn't get that across I would write a song and I also think I put messages across uh like a song later that you'll hear beauty queen it's very much about this generation and how we're all very self um self-aware a bit too much and we you know look at the little things and create insecurities around them because we're constantly looking at media that is portraying a certain image and Mm. I think it's yeah I think music is um a self-expression for anyone even if you're just like listening to it it's um it's a way for you to connect with something and I think that's like the main message of music okay so we've just played small village big town can you tell us what that was about then So Small Village Big Town was about um, back in September, I was just about to move to Brighton because I was going to drama school. But then um, unfortunately, due to an illness, I had to um, take a year out. But at the time, moving away seemed like the biggest thing in Mm -hmm. my life. And I was so stressed about it. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to write a song about, even though there's like some quirks in like this small village I live in. And there's things I definitely dislike about it. But I also like uh, something about it so nostalgic when you're leaving it, you just glamorize everything because that's what you're used to. So it was more like me kind of giving a farewell to like the village I grew up in and that I know. And then do you you feel as though as a result of doing that, you then maybe appreciated it a bit more as well? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I was able to appreciate it, especially when I moved away and it's it was so different. Um, It was really interesting to move away and be like, I actually miss that part, even though I used to hate that. I miss Mm. just certain parts of it. So I think it was very um, rewarding in that way. For you then, how does, because you sound like you're a prolific songwriter, um, <laughs> would you say you've got enough material for a few albums? Have you released an album yet? Um, an album's in the works. Uh, I often joke with the person I, um, you know, he helps me produce my music. I often joke because I have, in total, over the last three months, made 250 songs. Wow. That's just on the back burner, and that's not including songs from last year and all of that because I write songs pretty much like every week and it's not out of, oh, I need to write a song. It's like just a thing that comes to me. And I'm one of those annoying people that when it's at night, I'll come up with a melody and I'll be whispering it into my phone or um, I'll come up with the lyrics and I'll look at it the next morning and I go, oh, I can do something with that. So yeah, it's basically my every day. When did you start gigging then? I started, well, I would say seriously, it's been in the last two years. Um, The rest of gigging have been like just random events that I've been able to squeeze myself into. 
um and I often used to like be a bit too scared so I would like uh kind of refrain from if I got offered a gig I'd be like oh no I'm not ready I'm not ready and I don't know what's happened but in the last few years I feel more ready and that I don't have to Mm. exactly prove myself because I think my problem was at the start is I thought I need to prove myself to be able to be in this industry and I'm like a part of that yes but not to a point where you're like your only mission is to prove yourself it's more than that it's more it's it's like so much more than that and I think when you're starting out you you often just think oh I need to prove myself so I need to release this many songs or I need to make this kind of music because it's popular. Whereas actually, if you just write from a real and raw place, you're able to just, you know, go on. And yeah. um, I found success from that. And I don't know, I in Frank, I don't know how that's happened. I wasn't expecting things to lift off this much, but I'm very mm. appreciative and I'm beyond happy. So your first gig, was that at Duffy's Bar last year? Yeah, my first headlining gig, uh, because I'd done a few supports beforehand. Um, My first headlining gig was at Duffy's Bar in April. And that was one of the reaffirming moments to me that I'm doing this right, because I don't have a label or anybody behind me. I'm doing this all by myself. And um, I had 102 people buy tickets and I had 82 people turn up. And then I was like, okay I'm actually doing something right Mm. (laughs) which was very surprising but also it was very scary because then I realized oh you know these aren't just numbers like when you look at analytics you're constantly thinking they're just a number I don't um you forget that they're people and you forget that like if you saw them standing in a room that's a lot of people Um, because I tend not to look at analytics because I feel like if you get trapped in them you start like doubting yourself and um but as soon as that many people turned up I was I was in shock I really couldn't comprehend I I bet you were because I mean that's that's nearly capacity then at Duffy's isn't it yeah capacity at Duffy's I think is about 150 so I did I did quite well um for what I had (laughs) did very well especially headlining get a solo person headlining that's yeah quite uh, quite amazing how did you feel Mm -hmm. before you must have been really nervous leading up to the gig though Oh, I was so nervous. I I think I was nervous because obviously I'm organising this by myself. So first the Eventbrite link and everything was, I, I, I'm like an old granny with technology. So I was, I was so stressed I got it wrong <laughs> and I didn't. So that was fine. And then um, it was sorting out the support acts because um, I know a few artists, but I know that some of them aren't comfortable with gigging right now. So I was struggling to find that and then um the rehearsal process because I asked some session musicians to come in and play some songs with me because I felt that and it just an acoustic guitar for a headlining gig could get a bit monotonous so I thought if I add a bit of a band into it it will be like more electric which proved to work well um but yeah I I think I was very fortunate that the stress kind of went the week before Mm -hmm. because once I saw that people were buying tickets also sharing about it and it was also the thing of when people are posting on their stories I'm really excited to see this concert it was like oh actually I have nothing to stress about like yeah I, I just need to at the end of the day do a good performance and that's what I should be stressed about let's play another one of your songs let's play beauty queen now you've told us a bit about that so yeah how did how did that come about what what, what was the motivation behind it why did you beauty queen I wrote originally as a slow ballad because I one day I was looking at Instagram and I started getting really like in my head and I was like oh my gosh like I don't I I'm not this far ahead yet like I've been putting all this work and I'm not this far ahead and what if people give up on me because I've not been posting for a while and I started stressing myself out and then I spoke to one of my friends about it and she's in a different kind of um creative space she's an artist and we spoke about it and she was like yeah, but that's exactly how I feel. If I if I don't constantly promote my stuff, if I'm not constantly there, um, I'm not good enough because I'm not seen by people. And I was like, it's so stupid. I was like, why can't I just create? And then after that, I started just deep delving into so um, 
so many people on the platform complaining about it and then I was like this this needs to be a song I was like I feel so strongly about this so it just came to me and I started writing it and then after I wrote it I just kind of felt like a relief because I was like if I was listening to this this would be like such a good message for me um and I'm hoping even if it's to two or three people that they can take something away from this and like uplift themselves rather than put themselves down um and I made sure that it was with a pop beat so it um is groovy and you're able to like have fun whilst listening to these more insightful lyrics excellent well (laughs) let's have some fun then and let's listen to it so here's beauty queen by heather mcdowell That was Beauty Queen by the amazing singer-songwriter Heather McDowell, who happens to be this week's guest here on Live, Local and Loud. So, Heather, now you're playing Glastonbury. Glastonbury this year, yes. So how did that come about then? Have you played before? How did you get the gig? Um, So I, I went through the audition process and I just sent, like, a portfolio of my songs and a video and um the funny thing about it is they had the wrong email so i should have found out like ages ago i was in it and then one of my um one of my friends who works for glaston budget was like there's there's a thing here that says heather mcdowell 19 playing glaston budget and i was like oh my god i'm 19 and then he was like yes but you're also heather mcdowell (laughs) i was like (laughs) i was like wait can you confirm so then they confirmed it and it was insane because um afterwards i got all the information through and 
I really did that audition not expecting to hear anything back. Wow. Um, so it was really like a massive achievement for me and I just can't, I'm still so excited and I can't believe I'm doing this. Brilliant, brilliant. So well done and congratulations on that. Thank you. Have you been to Glastonbury before then? No, I've actually been to no festivals before. So this is my first festival as well as performing. That's amazing. Um, so that's going to be really insane and cool. I'm just very excited. Are you, are you actually able to stay there for the whole weekend? Yes. Um, so I'm going to be uh, staying the whole weekend and that's well, going to be great because I can meet other people in this industry and just like yeah. watch them and enjoy music, live that's music. It networking and stuff um i keep keep referring to it as a weekend because it usually is a weekend but of course this year it goes from the thursday the second to saturday the fourth yes of june so it's not actually the week weekend it's sort of half the weekend yeah <laughs> uh yeah so okay that's brilliant no it's good that you're staying there the whole time because i find it an absolutely fantastic uh weekend i go every year i just can't wait for it and what so when are you actually playing what date and time so on friday the 3rd of june i'm playing at quarter to two at the icon stage and that's right. going to be featuring some session musicians behind me oh nice and hang then, on a minute hang on can yeah. we just hold on to that i want to see yeah. who who do you know who you're clash, clashing with with on the main uh, stage no so what day was that sorry the 3rd of June on the icon stage. So that's the 3rd. So that'll be the Friday, the 3rd of June. And what time was it? Uh, 1.45. Friday, the 3rd of June. So, okay. So on the main stage then, 1.45. It looks like James Watt and the Avenues will start at 10 past 1. So you'll be on half an hour after them and before one step behind. So that'll be quite handy then. You sort of slot in between those two. Yes. So so obviously one step behind being a Madness tribute band while well, people are getting ready for you. They can pop it for them rather. They can pop in to see you on the, uh, did you say the local? Icon stage. Icon stage, right. Okay. Yeah. So that's the outdoor one. So they can stop off and see you for a bit and then crack on to a bit of Madness. That sounds Definitely. good. Excellent, excellent. And then what was the next time you're playing? Um, so it's like Friday evening, Saturday morning. I'm playing at five to one in the morning oh, yeah. on the VIP stage. Excellent. That's lovely. That's a lovely marquee, that really cosy sort of atmosphere. So that would yeah. be brilliant. And then on the last day, Saturday the 4th of June, I'm playing the Loco stage at 10 to 2 on the Saturday 10 to 2 right let's have a look at that 10 to 2 I must admit that loco stage is lovely there's a lovely atmosphere going in there it's a big marquee probably got a capacity of about a thousand people um, wow. and the lights are good the sounds good as with all the stages um, you just get a really good atmosphere and it's covered as well which means if it's raining then everybody's going to oh, shelter in your tent so that's happy, perfect happy days if it rains if <laughs> yeah. it doesn't rain they'll all be outside soaking up the rays so yes <laughs> sorry what time on the saturday did you say you're playing um i'm playing at 10 to 2 50 all right looks like we've got a bit of a gap on the uh on the main stage then that'll be after the fufu sailors who are really good actually and before money for nothing which are obviously a dire straits uh tribute band on the main stage um but obviously there's a few other stages that you may clash with but i won't look at i won't go through them all so yeah well done with that so you must be quite excited about that you're appearing three times then at glaston budget yes i'm very excited and um no pressure but appearing three times on three different stages i think is going to be a really good experience for me and to be able to um hopefully have a different kind of crowd to what i'm used to so that'll be challenging but really good for me so i'm mm. excited brilliant so you'll have a band with you on your first performance yes friday will you will you be will you have the same band when you're on saturday no so on the saturday morning and the saturday afternoon i'm playing acoustically right. so um that'll be me on my electric guitar do you have you so have you done any collaborations yet with anybody or do you intend to? I haven't done any collaborations yet. I'm 
planning on doing some soon with my new album. I've got a few people in mind I would like to collaborate with. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at with collaborations. I'm just first making sure that everything's sorted around it. And then, yeah, it will be really exciting to collaborate with other artists. Oh, okay, brilliant. You mentioned album there. So what's your plans for your album then? When's that going to be released? So my album most likely is going to be released at the end of this year. Yeah. Um, like not like the right end, not like December, probably around October, November-ish. Wow. Um, and yeah, it's going to have some new kind of music from me, uh, different genres, but um, it's telling a story in it. So I'm very excited for people to hear that. Um, okay, good. Oh, by the way, talk back to Glastonbury Budget. Did, did you, are you aware of their record breaking attempt? Yes, um, it's seeing how many people can wear paper crowns, isn't it? In, That's uh, it. in one place on the Friday yeah. at 4.45 in the afternoon. Yes. And you've got to buy I'll definitely it. be taking part in that. Brilliant. And you've got to buy a paper crown for a pound and all the proceeds go to Age UK, Leicestershire and Rutland. So that would be brilliant. And then we could all say we're part of a world record attempt. How exciting is that? That will be amazing. I can't <laughs> wait. I had a quick Google. I think the current um, um, world record for that, wearing a paper crown in the same place, is is over 2,000, I think, between two and oh, 3,000. Oh, I'm sure we can beat that. Yeah, because usually uh, Glaston Budget, I think, has m- more than 10,000 people over the whole weekend. So wow. hopefully on the Friday, we should be able to get more than 2,000 in, in, the, in the field. So that would be great. Definitely. Okay, brilliant, Heather. So, yeah, um, so any other plans for the future? You've got a new single coming out. Tell us about that. Yes, I do. It's called The Underneath, and um, it's about just when you're overthinking in a relationship, you constantly see uh, the underneath of things, like everything has a silver lining. Mm. And um, I wrote this song out of experience and it was really um it's a really meaningful song to me and i'm just so proud of it and i can't wait for everybody to hear it excellent i presume you'll be playing all these songs at glaston budget will you definitely will be yes excellent and before we play the underneath um how can people keep in touch with you uh so my instagram and facebook is heather music same as youtube uh and for music on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play, it's Heather McDowell with an A L L at the end. So, yeah. And Muck M C as opposed M-C. to M A C. Yes. Yes. So Heather McDowell. Okay, well that's brilliant. Well, thank you very much for today's little chat, Heather. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. That's quite all right, and I can't wait to see you at Glaston Budget. Thank Meanwhile, you. Meanwhile, here's the underneath by Heather McDowell. Thank you. 
That was me chatting to young singer-songwriter Heather McDowell. Can't wait to see her at Glastonbudget. Okay, so now let's have uh, one of my old favourites from Glastonbudget, band I love to see live, Smack Jack. You can see them on Saturday the 4th of June on the Icon stage at 3.15. Meanwhile, here's Smack Jack and Totalitarian Vegetarian. Smack Jack and Totalitarian Vegetarian. They can be seen on Saturday the 4th of June at Glastonbudget 315 on the Icon stage, which is the outdoor stage. So if it's nice and sunny, that'll be a very popular stage. If it's uh, a little bit wet and miserable, then that'll be quite an unpopular stage. So it all depends how it goes. Um, however, I always I like the Icon stage because it's on the main thoroughfare on the way to the uh, main stage. So when you're heading to the main stage, pop in the Icon, see what's going on there. And you'll find Smack Jack on Saturday the 4th at 3.15. Okay, so now it's time for our last show on this week's live Local and Loud. Let's have a little bit of Steve Faulkner. Um, Steve Faulkner is going to be performing with Dan Jerry on Thursday the 2nd at Glaston Budget at 7.45 on the Loco stage. So that's an indoor stage. So that will be great if it is raining. Um, so, yeah, and he's also performing on Thursday at 5 minutes past midnight. No. Five minutes to one on Thursday morning. So here's Steve Faulkner, Don't Burn the Sky.
that was young Steve Faulkner, Don't Burn the Sky. Don't forget you can see him Thursday the 2nd of June at 7.45 on the Low Coast stage. And also again Thursday at 5 to 1 in the morning on the VIP stage. So that's great. That brings us to the end of another live local and loud with me, Kevin Gorn. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget, if you want to find out more about any of the gigs or find out what's coming up, check out musicinleicester.co.uk. Do have a good week and I'll see you next Thursday, 5 o'clock, for yet another Glaston Budget special here on Hermitage FM. Hermitage FM.